test on this issue, for it may affect both Islam and South Asia. Iqbal's poetic fervor knew no bounds. He wrote poem after poem to arouse the suffering humanity. In his famous poem, Khizr, the Guide, he wrote elaborately on problems of capital and labor. Iqbal's poetry is a call to action. Of life, he said, but ask its inmost truth of that mountain hewer's soul, his stream of milk, his sharp axe, his bitter rock, his life. The Muslim world was in turmoil. The Turks, who were in fact the custodians of all that represented the glory of the Muslims, were facing unsurmountable odds. Western powers had nicknamed Turkey as the sick man of Europe. Arousing through verses of exquisite beauty, the disintegrated and the dormant world of Islam. Iqbal gave a dynamic interpretation of the eternal message of Islam and urged the Muslims to unite and meet the challenges of time. Iqbal's great love of liberty for all people and his urge for the emancipation of all mankind drove him out of the folds of narrow nationalism. He totally rejected the Western cult of nationalism, which was the creed of the Indian National Congress. He claimed that Islam was the basis of nationhood for the Muslims of India. <laughs> Iqbal's poetic appeal was like a gushing stream. He ruled out all forms of national chauvinism, imperialist domination, racial discrimination, social and economic exploitation, and personal aggrandizement, since all of them debase human personality. He urged the people to fortify the ego so that the due respect and dignity of man is irrevocably restored. <laughs> The falcon occupies an important place in Iqbal's poetic symbols. He exhorts the Muslim youth, in whose courage and ability he has tremendous faith, to emulate the life pattern of the falcon, who does not make a habitat and flies high into the vast spaces of the sky. Himself a profound philosopher, Iqbal's approach to philosophy was analytical and critical. Amongst the modern philosophers, he spoke of Karl Marx as a prophet uninspired by Gabriel. <laughs> He criticized Hegel for his shallow idealism. He 
he said that Bergson's thought weakened man's ego. His poem, Lenin in the Presence of God, is an indictment against the West's worship of gold. Nietzsche, according to him, possessed a believer's heart and a heathen's brain. Iqbal wrote poetry in both Urdu and Persian languages. He was a devotee of the great Persian mystic poet Rumi, whose verse, in his view, was in consonance with the teachings of the Holy Quran. The tomb of Rumi in the city of Konya is a shrine which attracts Sufi pilgrims from all over the world. And it was Rumi in whose company Iqbal embarked upon a celestial journey, a supreme achievement of his poetic imagination and intellectual powers. Iqbal's Javed Nama, the Book of Eternity, is a long dramatic poem in Persian which narrates the poet's spiritual journey to the heavens with Rumi as his guide. By means of various monologues and dialogues written in chaste verses of unparalleled charm and beauty, Iqbal expressed his thoughts on various problems that confront man and described the world order which he thought best for mankind. Iqbal rejected all forms of oppressive systems, imperialism, fascism, communism, and the capitalistic orders of life. As for communism and capitalism, he likened them to two millstones grinding man in between like glass. Iqbal laid great emphasis on Islamic social justice. The League of Nations was to Iqbal a farce. Why not a League of Mankind? The Western cult of nationalism had sown the seeds of discord amongst various people. It gave rise to chauvinism and engendered race and color prejudices. As enjoined by Islam, Iqbal treated mankind as one family. He believed in the unity of humanity, based on equal rights for every human being. <laughs> فقط ملت آدم مکے نے دیا خاک جنیوا کو یہ پیغام جمعیت اقوام کہ جمعیت آدم In his later years, Iqbal yearned for a comrade who could lead the Muslims of the South Asian subcontinent to their destiny as visualized by him. قدیمِ من کجاست نخل سین آیم قلیمِ من کجاست that comrade and leader of men emerged in the person of qaid azam muhammad ali jinnah iqbal's message was universal and dynamic his first addresses were the muslims because muslim society germinated the seeds of internationalism such a society fully developed in accordance with the revivified tenets and values of Islam and fortified by the achievements of modern knowledge could become a nucleus for the ultimate unity of mankind. This idea was foremost in Iqbal's mind when presiding over the Allahabad session of the Muslim League in 1930, he demanded a separate homeland for the Muslims of India. In 1931, Iqbal attended the second and third sessions of the Roundtable Conference, which was called in London by the British government for considering the question of constitutional reforms in the subcontinent. Spain, 
where the Muslim civilization flourished for 700 years and became instrumental in initiating the Age of Enlightenment in Europe. On his way back home, Iqbal visited Spain. The Mosque of Cordova inspired him to write one of his greatest poems. After the fall of the Muslim power in Spain, Iqbal was the first Muslim to offer prayers in this mosque. Hai tahe gardoon agar husn mein teri nazir, qalb musalma mein hai, aur nahi hai kahi. On the banks of the Guadalquivir, Iqbal's prophetic vision saw the revival of the glory of Islam. In 1938, Iqbal's failing health took a serious turn, and on 21st April of the same year, he breathed his last. Mankind lost one of her greatest sons. Iqbal had realized creatively that poetry and life are inseparable. With the establishment of Pakistan, his dream of a separate homeland for the Indian Muslims was realized. The resurgent spirit of Islam welcomed the birth of Pakistan in the same way as in one of Iqbal's finest poems, the earth soul welcomed Adam. Open thine eye. Behold the earth, the stars, and the atmosphere. Behold the sun rising from the east. These vapors and clouds, these winds and mountains, these deserts and oceans, the high vault of the heavens, and the silence of space are all thine to control. Till yesterday, the graceful forms of the angels pleased thine eyes. Behold today thine own form in the looking glass of time.